When your smart charger refuses to play ball, flashing warnings and refusing to charge your LiPos, it's usually because one of the cells has dropped below the safe limit, which is around three volts. But here's the thing, a low voltage cell isn't necessarily a dead one. It's just too far gone for your so-called smart charger to handle until we give it a little bit of help. So before you completely bin it, let's try some LiPo CPR and see if we can bring it back to life. Hello and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. So before we get started, this is your Worldly Bloke safety briefing. LiPos can catch fire. They can puff up, vent or explode if they're mistreated. So here's what you'll need to do to be safe. Think about using a fireproof charging bag. You'll need a bench power supply or a capable smart charger. You need a multimeter, PPE, eye protection mainly. Don't use puffed, damaged or leaking packs. Just use whatever you're comfortable with, but you've been warned. This is a last resort technique and it's not a routine fix. So after that, let's get started. Lipo cell voltages can drop very low when one cell in the pack discharges much faster than the others. And this is often due to age, internal damage or just imbalance. And this typically happens under load, say during a flight on a hot day, where the weaker cell reaches empty before the rest but continues to be pushed by the current flowing through the pack. Instead of supplying power, the depleted cell starts to absorb current in the wrong direction, and that causes heat, chemical damage, and a big drop in capacity. Sometimes the polarity flips almost entirely, and instead of helping, the cell becomes a load, just like a short circuit inside your pack. It heats up, degrades and becomes unreliable. And no matter how careful and diligent you are, you can still get cells with wacky voltages, just through age or random damage. So let me demonstrate very quickly the sort of behavior that we'll see with your charger. Now this is a LiPo that I know has a problem. If I plug it in here, you'll immediately see that what we've got is four cells. These are at 3.7, 3.7, 3.7. This one is at, it's about 0.3 of a volt. It's miles out. And if I try to charge it, that's the sort of problem you're gonna get. And you will not be able to charge this battery with this charger at all. So let's see if we can try and fix this. The first thing to do is just carefully work out and don't guess which cell's wrong. Just use a multimeter to check which cell is dead. Now if we check across all the pairs in here, we'll see that this first one is 3.7, the next one 3.7, that one 3.7, and that one, well, it's about half a volt, something like that. And because that one there, this cell here on these two wires is under three volts, way under three volts, then the charger won't actually charge anything. Now do remember what I'm about to do. If the pack is swollen, puffed or visibly damaged, don't even attempt this, just bin it safely. Uh, if the pack looks okay, you could use a bench power supply like this, or if you've got a suitable charger that supports nickel metal hydride or PB mode, you can sort of fake being a bench power supply. And what we can do is inject voltage into here, give it a little nudge, a bit like a mini CPR, if you like. So I've set my bench power supply to 4.2 volts and 200 milliamps, keeping it very low, and that's current limited to 200 milliamps. You could go a little bit higher, but I think as a start, 200 milliamps is fine. 
giving us a nice gentle CPR. So what I've got here is these probes connected to my bench power supply over here. If I turn this on, uh, connect this to that cell and double check that you've got it the right way around. Red's positive, black's negative. And if we keep an eye on the bench power supply, you see it started down at one volt. It's gradually creeping up. And once it rises to above three volts, it's pretty much safe to switch over to your regular balance charger. Again, it's creeping up to two volts there. Now, if it doesn't budge after a minute or so, then just abandon this because the cell is completely and utterly dead. Watch out carefully for any heat buildup, swelling, or just funny smells coming from the battery. And it, if it feels off, just stop. That pack's really not coming back. And the trick with this really is to take it slowly. Don't rush. Don't put big voltages or big currents in. You're just trying to gently kick that cell back into life. We're very nearly there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go, three volts. So if I get my charger now and try the same thing again, plug that in there, plug that in there. And although that's dropped down a bit, I think this will charge. And that's charging now. It's immediately jumped up to three volts. So that's all good. A bit of LiPo CPR is bringing this back to life. And if you don't have a bench power supply, a lot of these smart chargers, they have nickel metal hydride or PB mode. Let me just show you that. Stop. Thank you. When you go to charge, you can put it into a different mode, like nickel metal hydride or PB. And then you can take the voltage output from here and feed it into the LiPo. You don't balance charge it. You basically take the output from your main voltage output because nickel metal hydride and PB don't use balance charging. It's not enabled. So you can take, make a connector up, connect that output there, connect it up to your LiPo like I just did with these leads and do it exactly the same way. You just need to set the voltage on PB to 4.2 volts. Now this technique works great for multi-cell packs, but what about 1S LiPos? These are the most likely to go flat because they don't have balance plugs and most USB chargers simply refuse to try if the voltage is too low. If your 1S reads near zero, don't panic. It might just be sort of asleep and you can wake it up with a bench power supply by gently feeding it 4.2 volts at around 100 milliamps or 0.1 of an amp for a minute or so. Just enough to bring it back to life. So I've got this 550 milliamp hour 1S cell. To be honest, it's in a bit of a sorry state and I know it's a little bit dead. So if I plug it into my 1S charger, we can see here it doesn't even register. Now, this charger may actually charge this because this is one of the best 1S chargers around, the Vifly Whoop Store 3. But we can do a bit of CPR on this as well. Now again, you need to be absolutely sure you've got the polarity right. Red goes to positive and black goes to negative. And I've got this little lead made up here, which is connected to my power supply over there. And turn the power supply on it will start charging up a little bit. Now I'm not gonna give this very long. These cells are pretty fragile, so don't rush it. And again, once it creeps up to about three volts, you can disconnect it, which I think I'm going to do now. And let's plug it back in this charger and see what happens. 
Now that's registering 1.1 volts. Now this is a pretty tired battery, but let's just try charging it. And it's starting to take charge now. So that's creeping up to two volts very quickly. It just needed a little kick to get it going. But you have to keep a very careful eye on these just to make sure that they don't start doing anything funny. And like I said, this cell is probably a little bit too tired to be used. It's close to being safely disposed of. And just because 1S LiPos are small, it doesn't mean they're safe to abuse. A puffed 1S can still start a fire if it's shorted, so always treat even the tiniest cells with respect. Now, when you've recovered the battery, you can do a full balance charge slowly. Watch closely for any heat, swelling, or weird voltage behavior. And if your charger supports it, check the internal resistance. If it charges evenly and holds voltage, you're good to go. But, if it self-discharges, heats up, the internal impedance is way off or it won't balance, it's time for the LiPo graveyard. LiPo CPR, well, it isn't for every pack, but it's a useful technique if you need it. Just remember, low amps, close monitoring, and never revive a puffed or damaged cell. Also, a revived LiPo is very unlikely to return to grade A condition, so mark it up. And I tend to grade my batteries like this. I've got my grade A's, these are new or healthy batteries. Grade B's, they're the ones that are a little bit older and aging and they've had lots of charge cycles or I've revived them. And I tend to use those for warm up flights. And then grade C, well, they're almost done, and I use those to power field gear or chargers. A quick battery top tip. When you buy a new pack, put a sticker on it with a date. Keep a Sharpie next to your charger and just add a little dot every time you charge it. It's simple, visual, and it works. Now, if you found that helpful, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. It really helps me. Have you brought a lipo back from the dead? Or maybe you've lost one mid-rescue? Let's hear your stories below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.